Hi, welcome to Nina in the Kitchen, where today we are making soft pretzels, which I just love to make. And by the way, that's a great project if you have little kids in the house and maybe it's a rainy day or it's snowing and you don't know what to do with them. Kids love dough, right? They love to play with it. This is a great project with kids. So I'm going to make it in my mixer since um, that's really the easy way to do it. But so that means you start with the liquid. And this is one and a half cups of warm liquid. And that's about 105 degrees. And the way you test it is just, you know, put it on the inside of your arm like you would test a baby bottle. So I have water going in. I have four tablespoons of butter, which I've semi-melted. So that's four tablespoons of butter that's going in. I also have two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and I'm using instant yeast. This is one tablespoon or one package if you're proofing your yeast. Dump everything in there. There's the salt. I'm going to measure out four and a half cups of flour, and then we'll start this mixing. Um, this will take anywhere from four and a half to five cups. So four and a half cups goes in. And this is an all-purpose flour. Um, you can use bread flour if you'd like, but it's really not necessary. Well, this dough is ready, and the way that I know that it's ready is when I touch it, it bounces back. The size of the bowl, in some recipes they'll say, when the side of the bowl is clean. And as you can see, it's not perfectly clean, but I don't want it to be perfectly clean because if you do that, your dough is going to end up being dry. You see, if I push this, it sort of bounces back on me. It has some resistance. So that means that there's a good gluten development now. Um, so I'm going to take this off. But before I do, this is a clean bowl with a little bit of vegetable oil in it. You want a tasteless oil for this. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to paint this bowl with this oil. And the dough will go in here. We cover it with plastic wrap and then it will rest for about an hour until it doubles in volume. What's nice about these silicone brushes is that this goes right into the dishwasher. You love that, huh? So, I'll just take this off. If your dough is properly hydrated, let me just take this out for a minute. You know that your dough is ready for the bowl, ready to rise, when you can put it on the counter and roll it, and if you push it, it's tacky, but nothing sticks to your hands, and that is a good dough. See, I'm, I'm not using anything on this dough. There's no oil or flour on the counter, and what I'm doing now is just creating a tension on the surface, and that's just to um, help it rise, but it also gives it a really nice texture so that the final product will be, have a nice chew to it. So you put your dough into the bowl, and I'm going to flip it. So now the top of my dough is oiled as well as the bottom. And that prevents a crust from forming. From here, all I do, what, what, the reason for doing all of this, putting it in a bowl and covering it, the reason for that is you just don't want to draft. If there's a door that's open or somebody walks in the room or, um, oh, your heat goes on or a fan is on, all of those things will contribute to forming a crust on your dough, which you really don't want. So I have plastic wrap, but what happens is this dough will grow and the moisture in it will you'll form a condensation on the plastic. And you really don't need that, so I just put a couple of holes in it. And now we'll let this sit for an hour and I'll see you when it's ready to roll. 
well, as you can see, this has doubled. <laughs> it looks like a happy little loaf of bread here. So there's no reason to punch your dough down. <laughs> All that you need to do, I have my ring on, I forgot to take it off. All that you need to do is just gently deflate it. And then what I do is I weigh it. Now you don't have to do that, but I have found that Anytime I bake any sort of dough, um, if I weigh it and have even pieces go into the oven, it actually gives you a better product. So what I'm going to do is cut this into eight even pieces. You know, don't drive yourself nuts. It's just baking. So if you don't have a scale, just go ahead and uh, eyeball it. That'll be fine. If you, if you do have to eyeball it, what you want to do is cut your dough in half and then cut it in half again and then half of that rather than try to cut eight little pieces all at once. Okay. So I have eight pieces. They're all even sized and you shouldn't have to use any more flour on the surface. Um, but if you do, just keep a little bit nearby. What I've done is I've set up two pieces of tape on the counter and from end to end, this is 22 inches. So I've measured it once and I'm just going to use this as a guide. So you start out with this little cylinder shape that you want to make into a snake, if you will, is you start out with a little dough like this and then you use your fingertips and rock back and forth and as you as you rock back and forth, you expand your fingers and that it's the, the finger expansion that makes your dough move out. And what's nice is that you can also, if you don't see it, you can feel with your fingers where you have thicker spaces, thicker parts, thinner parts, and then you can just work accordingly. So start in the middle with fingers closed and move out to the sides. And I think we're going to be there in just a second. I also have two pans that I've prepped. And what I'm going to do is form these pretzels and they will need about a 15 minute rest. So the way you form a pretzel is you make a U with the ends towards you. And then you, this is, we'll call this 12 o'clock, two o'clock, 10 o'clock. So what I do is I cross one side over the other, doesn't matter which, twist once, and then place one end at 10, one end at two, and there's your pretzel. Pretty nice, huh? <laughs> I'm just going to put this on a silicone pan. If your dough comes back on you, retracts back, which it will, it will right away, or it may, if that happens, just put it aside, let it rest for a few minutes, and try this again. And the second time, I guarantee you, it will work. And that looks good. So that U shape again, twist once, twist twice, and then go to 10 and two. Well, it's been 15 minutes at these have been resting. They've been resting under a towel. And this is the first batch that I rolled out. So um, let me talk about these ingredients. What I have today are three toppings. One is pretzel salt, which is a coarse salt. And I've tried other salts for this. Pretzel salt holds up the best. I've tried kosher and different sea salts. Um, you can get pretzel salts online if you can't find it in your hometown. And um, I have some poppy seeds and some sesame seed. So here's what happens with pretzels. It's a two-part bake. The first part is that you boil them in water. The second part of baking is done in the oven. When they go into water, if you make them professionally, if you're in a, a pretzel factory, those people use water and then they add lye to it. Lye raises the pH of the water to 13. And um, you can't get lye, and if you can, you don't want to use it, it's very corrosive. You need goggles, gloves, and the whole thing. So what we use at home 
the home cook can use baking soda. Baking soda has a pH of eight. It's a bicarbonate. So what I do is I bake my baking soda <laughs> for two hours at 250. This can be done days in advance. You can make it just someday when you're home and uh, just keep it for making pretzels. So I go 250 for two hours and what that does is it dehydrates the bicarbonate of soda, takes it from a pH of eight, turns it into a carbonate, raises the pH to 11. So now we have the carbonate is 11 and um, the lye is 13. So that's pretty close. And it does make a difference and that's why I even bother. So what I'm going to do is add the baking soda to the water. I have uh, one cup going into three quarts of water. And when you do that, it actually kind of splashes up a little bit, it bubbles up. So just be aware of that. You want this at kind of a rolling boil like that. And because baking soda is salty, what I'm going to do is remove the pretzels and then dip them into some clean water. So here goes one. And you can use a wider pan. They stay in here for 30 seconds. On my big stove, I use a wider pan and um, I can fit three in there. I think I'll just do one at a time here. And as they're boiling, you just sort of put some water over them. 30 seconds is up. I'm just putting them, putting this in fresh water. And so on. That was loud. Now the last step before going into the oven is to egg wash these. So this is one egg with maybe a teaspoon of, of water. This will help not only glaze your pretzel, but also it gives, it gives a place for all of your goodies to nestle into. So we have the pretzel salt. I'll do one with salt. And we have one with poppy seeds. These go into a 425 degree oven and they'll take about 15 minutes or so. Keep an eye on them. 15 to 18 minutes usually. So um, I'll see these little beauties then. Well, these have come out of the oven. They're beautiful. And I rested them for 10 minutes. You should always rest bread before you eat it. You can't eat it right out of the oven because you're taking all the air and you squish it out as you cut it or eat it. So let your bread rest. It's part of the baking process. And you'll notice this bread, these are a little dark and that's because of the baking soda that I reduced down from a carbonate to a, or from a bicarbonate to a carbonate. And this one is just calling my name. It's, Mm. The crust on this, and this is why I do the carbonate thing, the crust on this is, it's tender, but it's crispy, and then the inside is doughy and light. I also want to mention, while I'm thinking of it, that what you can do is half-bake these. They go in for 15 minutes, so do seven minutes, and you can take them out, let them cool off, wrap them, and put them in your freezer. And then you have a nice little snack once in a while. You just throw one in the toaster oven to finish cooking. So, hmm. Mm. That was a great recipe. It's light and airy, buttery, a little buttery finish. That's very good. Mmm. I love these things. <laughs> I don't know why. But... I hope you try this recipe. Please follow me by subscribing and um, Facebook, Nina in the Kitchen, NinaInTheKitchen.net for the recipes. Thank you so much for watching. 
Bye, guys.